War is hell, guys. Welcome to my castle of madness, and the next 20 or so minutes of your life. I was challenged on Twitter by Gemduduchu to fight a custom battle on Rome 2 Total War using only three units of elite hoplites against a massive army of Persian uh, light infantry uh, and this is how it went so in order to do this uh, Thermopylae situation I had to use Parthia for Persia and Macedon for Sparta I gave them a great deal of spear infantry three archers and um, because you can't fight custom battles in this game without a general I I had to give them um, a general unit, uh, which means they uh, have an extra advantage over me. As you can see, I've been allowed to give my troops experience, and so each one of my Macedonian units has just three gold chevrons of experience to approximate elite Spartan hoplites. So here we are zooming into the map, and at first glance it's looking pretty bad because the AI has noticed that uh, there are two river crossing points. However, due to what looks like some sort of a glitch in the way the AI thinks, it's massed all of its infantry over at the smaller crossing and just left its general over at the bigger one. Uh, now this could still be a problem, but nevertheless I've decided to mass all of my forces over <laughs> at the smaller crossing and defend that from the infantry uh, to stop them crossing, hoping that they don't then split in half and come at both sides, in which case this challenge will end uh, incredibly badly for me. And uh, as for his um, cavalry, we're just going to have to deal with that if he decides to use it as a flanking force. So, the deal with river crossings is that you have to you have to block the passage, and you have to you have to block it uh, in anticipation of them charging across. So, it usually helps to hang back a little bit and make it look as if they can still get over uh, before actually deploying properly. Uh, they're pretty keen to get across, they have a lot of numbers, and so as they meet the riverbank, I'm going to move my guys forward to block my side of the river, constrict the fighting area, and make sure that I give them a hard time for trying to cross my river. Kind of feeling a little bit like the troll in the Billy Goat's Gruff story here. Uh, I'm going to try and catch them midstream so they can't uh, find any little mouse like cracks, mouse sized cracks to, to squeeze past because that can happen. You can see on the left and right how they have. Uh, sort of diminished into a tiny column of men and that's because he'd give them a, uh, the AI had given them an order to basically to come get round my, my flanks but now I've stopped them in the water and I am going to push them slowly backwards for certain because these are um, these units are actually uh, Macedonian shield bearers, or I believe the actual name is Hippaspes, or something like that, or Hippaspists. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty poor on, on Greek uh, words, so I have to forgive that. And obviously they're opposed to a bunch of lightly armed guys with uh, wicker shields based on the wicker shields uh, found uh, in the ruins of uh, Dura Europis, I think. Uh, which means actually that these are, are somewhat conjectural, except for the fact that on some Athenian uh, or Doric or gla glazed pottery, you can see uh, Persian uh, Sparabra 
of shield men with these long uh, geometrically decorated wicker shields. So my general was a reserve uh, in case his cavalry was going to come and attack us from the flank, but I see that he's moved his cavalry uh, into position behind his forces, and so I'm going to commit my general to the fight. The general's bodyguard is also uh, shield bearers, and they are going to be the, the link in the center of my two wings of defending infantry. Um, I'm now taking the keep formation uh, function off. That's going to allow my men to be more aggressive and kill a lot more of their men much quicker. Which will hopefully contribute to their uh, morale crashing like a stone. The biggest problem for me really at this stage, because he's committed almost all of his infantry to the fight, which I can easily control, is uh, the archers. Now, the challenge was further specified to include a few units of archers. I would give, I, I think that means about three. So I gave them three units of archers. Um, now, I think if we were going to be completely sort of sticking to the rules about the Persian army at Thermopylae, obviously they would have immortals and they would have many more archers than this. But given the size of army that we were dealing with at Thermopylae, it's quite reasonable to actually just, uh, for a limited kind of challenge, uh, pretend it's like day one and this is the first uh, Persian infantry attack or something like that on the on the Spartan position. Now, uh, the left flank guys I had kept in keep formation and they were taking casualties from archers. And what's really important here at the second is to make sure that my units try not to turn their backs as much as possible. I'm having a little issue with the mouse there, getting traction, uh, making it clumsy. And also trying to keep them in action as much as possible because the archers are going to be the biggest killer of my men in this battle. And so those guys on the left flank had to be rushed in because they, keeping formation like good disciplined troops, had, had, uh, had hung back a little as the enemy withdrew. Now I've got a really good charge in from the general who I pulled out to reform because it was getting a little messy, and that is causing a unit of uh, Persians to rout. Casualties are looking good at the second on my end. General has taken a bit more because the archers are focusing him down, as is typical. Um, if they can kill the general, my morale is going to go down. I'm going to lose the ability to rally uh, troops, as you can see at the little button down at the bottom. I, ha I can, I can, I think, raise a banner and I can rally troops. Each regiment uh, uh, of uh, of shield bearers can also form a tight phalanx or phalanx uh, shield wall I think the button's called um, which gives them greater holding ability but I don't want to do that at the second if anything I want them to to drop as many of the enemy as hard and as quickly as possible uh, because uh, that's gonna that's gonna uh, make a lot of them panic and what I want here to happen is a chain route where a bunch of them lose so many men and get so frightened of the constricted space that they just run and uh, trigger everyone else to run. And that is starting to happen because as you can see there's a little red diamond appearing at the top of the standards and starting to flash. One's gone, that's a rout. Um, and it's got another one into red and yellow which means they're wavering. And so I just need to continue doing what I'm doing here at the second. Uh, to make them run. Now, uh, although that is what I should have been doing, I decided at the mo and in that moment to uh, to try and push them a little harder. And so, because my men went uh, pressing into them too much, I decided to click. Uh, attack on some of their banners, uh, some of their more distant banners, uh, which would make my troops give a little charge forwards 
deeper into them and it has caused and, but, and although that's risky because it means that my men could be cut down as they run forwards um, it has caused a great deal of consternation in the front ranks of the Persians and we've got three wavering, two routing, other ones breaking uh, and morale is just cr crashing down on the Persian side. Uh, if we look down at the balance of power at the bottom, it's still really much, uh, really well in their favour. They still have General's Bodyguard, which is excellent, Cataphract Archers, or Noble Cavalry or something like that. I don't quite know what it is. Um, and over there as well, and they just have so many when they have three units of archers which are going to be a real pain to deal with because the archers are going to run away from me, they'll be faster and they could uh, potentially shoot me to pieces because as I said before, um, if they had more archers I would have lost twice as many men by now and I would be in a really bad way uh, for the rest of the battle, but as it is two units down just uh, below or at half strength one unit, uh, barely lost a third of its men, and now I'm going to push pretty hard to try and catch his general. I was uh, trying to to push those units routing in the distance there into a full route which, from which they can't recover, but I saw an opportunity to get at his general and fix him in place, so I did that instead. Turned uh, my strongest unit of shield bearers into a flank, and now uh, things are going to get really messy because my front line doesn't exist anymore so I'm pulling back my general in order to fling him out at the left flank where my uh, my original left flank is, is being a little bit hard pressed there, you can see a lot of units rushed down on him a lot of units are rallying that's the problem with these kind of battles, you have to be patient you route them a little you get them panicky uh, and you uh, and you push them as far as you can, but don't go too far, because if you go too far, you spread out, and they'll pick you off, no matter how good your troops are. As you can see, one of my uh, units is now in the red, which means they uh, have about under, much, about, I don't know, a quarter of their men left. Heavy armor is going to be the deciding factor here for me, uh, because that's the only thing stopping these archers from shooting all of my men down. Uh, so it's really still important to keep them engaged so that they can't get a clear shot at my men that had to fire over the heads of their own men and uh, inevitably shooting some of their own men at the same time. Luckily, enough panic has been sown by my, my ferocious spearmen, my, my wonderfully uh, single-minded heavy infantry killing machines which just want to ste keep stepping forward and and uh, skewering anything in their path with their spears uh, that uh, whenever the Persian infantry start to to come back they almost immediately rout again because they just their morale is just broke really uh, and that's what we want so now as we can see in this nice these nice close-up scenes uh, it's getting really much, it's getting down to the archers uh, and the, his general. At the second, he's got three, four units of spearmen left. Five now, one rallied. They've all, I mean, they're all rallying pretty well. Uh, and but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to kill his general. If I can kill his general, then. Uh, I uh, increase my chances of winning by uh, a really high percentage. Hopefully, before he kills mine, because that uh, that would be bad at this stage. And it's, this is a touch and go moment in the battle for me, because I'm start my forces are starting to fracture, um, and as you can see, I'm now actively pushing my men. There we go, enemy general dead. That's why I'm pushing my men out. Uh, to attack separate units because now even my really depleted units can can really uh, hold their own against these guys. Uh, Mouse was misfiring there a second. I almost got a bad uh, bad cavalry charge on me, but luckily uh, I managed to get them 
facing the right direction at just at the right time. And now it's all about whether I can get rid of these cavalry before his archers, of which he has two good units, uh, just, uh, just pick me off here. This is a really dangerous situation for the general. My general uh, won't last long yet. There's the volley there that kills him. Um, but luckily, I've now got pretty much the field to myself with just these uh, obnoxious cavalrymen here and the two units of archers. Of the two, I'm most worried about the archers. I didn't think I was going to be able to get to this stage, actually. I thought that I would have uh, probably lost the battle by now. The fact that I'm here means I can actually win the battle, but only if I can kill his uh, cavalry off. And then, only if I can manage to keep my units together long enough to catch his archers. Now, my general's bodyguard is probably going to lose here because there's just too many of the enemy. And I can't catch the archers if in a, in a running fight unless they let me. Now, uh, what I'm going to, yeah, there goes my general's bodyguard there. Try to catch these guys. They do good skirmishing. They, they do what every good skirmisher does and they run away from heavy infantry, but that gives me the opportunity to trap his other archers against the riverbank. And they seem quite happy to fight me as well. I, I'm actually suspicious they may have run out of ammunition. So I'm going to fight these guys, and I'm immediately beating them. So I'm going to take the other unit of... Ouch, that would be... That's a pretty... Some pretty destructive arrow fire going on here from the light archers. But I'm going to take my second unit of shield bearers, and I'm going to move them towards the remaining unit of archers because the other one is just broken and now it's just going to be a chase if I catch them I'll win if they keep their distance keep shooting at me and if they have enough ammunition they will win what you can do if you actually are in this position and you are left with only skirmishes and you have enough of them the idea basically is to get the enemy to charge at one of them while you shoot at them with the one that isn't running and then alternate as they change their targets. An uh, interesting thing about Rome 2 is just uh, how, how fewer options you get as, as opposed to Rome 1. In Rome 1 you could pull off some really sneaky things if you came, if it came down to like river crossings, and if you had armies of skirmishes and things like that, because you could actually win battles if you paid, uh, if you, if you like focused enough, you paid enough attention to it, uh, with just skirmishes and with just cavalry, especially if you had horse archers. And I'm just going to speed it up now because, one way or another, this uh, is going to end here with either him. Shoot! Oh, he's routed, and he routes as well. That's a good thing as well because his entire army is gone. I actually end up winning the battle, which I did not think would happen. This obviously did not happen at the Battle of Thermopylae. We'll call this day one of Thermopylae. I have won. I've taken horrendous casualties. That is pretty much to be expected, and uh, a big surprise. And I think if he had more archers, I would have lost. To be honest, if he had three more units of archers, I wouldn't have been able to to win. You see there, he lost, um, he lost 1,354 men, killed 318 of my men. So, to be honest, we took huge chunks out of each other, but just his men routed first. You can see that my men killed, each, each unit killed 400, over 400 men. Their biggest kills, unsurprisingly, came from the general, his best unit, and three units of archers. As you can see, each one of the archers, we're averaging at least 30 men killed, and the two highest, uh, yeah, two highest scoring units killed uh, 57 and 69 men. So if they had had three more units of archers, and I had already lost 
318 men by the end, by that stage of the battle, uh, I just would have, uh, yeah, it would have been over earlier. But thank you to Jem Diduchu for challenging me uh, in this uh, edition, of, for this edition of uh, War as Hell. Uh, if you can think of a good challenge for Rome 2, please let me know what it is. Uh, this is specifically against the AI, so tell me what I should do next against the AI. Tell me how many men they're allowed, how many men I'm allowed, what difficulty, what, uh, and what factions we are dealing with here, and I will try and uh, film that and upload that for you. And we'll see how we'll see how how uh, and we'll, we'll we'll give this is a, and we'll see how uh, tough the AI really is to beat when the the odds are stacked against us because I'm assuming you guys aren't going to be fair. <laughs> so thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Leave a comment about what challenge. In, uh, leave your challenges in the comments below, uh, like and, and do all the other things that will uh, help, uh, help the channel grow, and I will see you again for another adventure in history land.